Matthew Perry, a comedy light extinguished way too soon. Matthew was everyone's forever friend, but in his passing, we are also seeing how beloved he was as a human being. He got his start as a child actor, landing guest spots on Charles in Charge and Beverly Hills 90210. But his big break came when he was cast in Friends, a sitcom about six single New Yorkers navigating adulthood that premiered on NBC in 1994. The show quickly gained momentum and became the anchor of the network's renowned Thursday night must-see TV schedule. Perry, along with his co-stars David Schwimmer, Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Matt LeBlanc, and Lisa Kudrow, became megastars virtually overnight. Perry stood out among a stellar ensemble cast as Chandler Bing, the charming, wisecracking flatmate of LeBlanc's Joey Tribbiani, and subsequently, the love interest of Cox's fastidious Monica Geller. Soon, he was attached to major stars like Julia Roberts and appearing in prominent films such as the 1997 rom-com Fools Rush In, opposite Selma Hayek, and the 2000 ensemble mob comedy The Whole Nine Yards with Bruce Willis. But there was a darker side to the life of one of the most popular comedians on television. In his memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, Perry described his lifetime battle with alcohol and opiate addiction. Although he claimed to have had his first drink at the age of 14, he didn't realize he was an alcoholic until he was 21. Nobody wanted to be famous more than me. I was convinced it was the answer. I was 25. It was the second year of Friends, and eight months into it, I realized the American dream is not making me happy, not filling the holes in my life. I couldn't get enough attention. Fame does not do what you think it's going to do. It was all a trick. Asked how he'd like to be remembered, he said, as a guy who lived life, loved well, lived well, and helped people that running into me was a good thing and not something bad. Matthew Langford Perry was born on August 19, 1969, in Williamstown, Massachusetts. His actor father, John Bennett Perry, split up with his mother, Suzanne Langford, while Matthew was still an infant. He went to live with his mother in Ottawa, Canada. Suzanne served as press secretary to Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and later remarried. Matthew's stepfather was Keith Morrison, a correspondent for NBC's Dateline program. By age 10, Perry started misbehaving. He stole money, smoked, let his grades slip, and beat up fellow student and future Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Perry began drinking alcohol at age 14 and was drinking every day by age 18. Perry practiced tennis often for 10 hours per day, and became a top-ranked junior player in Canada with the possibility of a tennis career. However, at age 15, he moved from Ottawa to Los Angeles to live with his father, and competition there was tougher. At 15 years old, Perry studied acting at Buckley School, a college preparatory school in Sherman Oaks, Los Angeles, and graduated in 1987. While in high school, he took improvisational comedy classes at LA Connection in Sherman Oaks. 
Perry landed his first movie part while still in high school, a supporting role opposite star River Phoenix in A Night in the Life of Jimmy Reardon. Unfortunately, the film came and went without much notice. In September 1987, Perry starred in his first sitcom, Second Chance. The show had a fantastical premise with Kyle Martin starring as a man who dies and gets a chance to go back to mentor a younger version of himself, played by Perry. The show was later retooled, dropping Martin and focusing on the teenage misadventures of Perry's character. Which I appreciate you trying to help me out, but I don't want to rob a store. Hey, I don't either, but you need money fast, right? How else are you going to get it? I don't know. I'll think of something. First thing you're going to do is call the bank. Look, I know I promised I'd pay you today, but you said... Mrs. Russell, no buts. You're four months behind. My company doesn't have the money by noon tomorrow. We're repossessing your tercel. Hey, tell you what, keep the calendar. <laughs> Despite its new direction and new title, Boys Will Be Boys, the sitcom failed to attract enough of an audience to stay on the air. Following the conclusion of the show, Perry was cast in several supporting roles and cameos on shows like Growing Pains and Empty Nest. He also had a supporting role on the short-lived Valerie Bertinelli comedic vehicle Sydney in 1990. Perry played Desi Arnaz Jr. in the Call Me Anna television biopic, which was based on the life of actress Patty Duke and gave very strong performance. Perry was originally unable to accept a role in another pilot, Six of One, which was eventually renamed Friends, due to his commitment to a drama pilot titled LAX 2194. He was given the chance to read for a role in Six of One and was chosen to play Chandler Bing after the LAX 2194 pilot was shelved. At 24, he would become the youngest person in the main cast. Auditions for the lead roles took place in New York and Los Angeles. The casting director shortlisted 1,000 actors who had applied for each role, down to 75. At the end of March, the number of potential actors had been reduced to three or four for each part, and these actors were asked to read for Les Moonves, then president of Warner Brothers Television. Having worked with David Schwimmer in the past, the series' creators wrote the character of Ross with him in mind, and he was the first actor cast. Cox wanted to play the role of Monica because she liked the strong character, but the producers had her in mind to play Rachel because of her cheery, upbeat energy, which was not how they envisioned Monica. After Cox's audition, though, Kaufman agreed with Cox and she got the role. When Matt LeBlanc auditioned for Joey, he put a different spin on the character. He played Joey more simple-minded than intended and gave the character heart. Although Crane and Kaufman did not want LeBlanc for the role at the time, they were told by the network to cast him. Jennifer Aniston, Matthew Perry, and Lisa Kudrow were cast based on their auditions. Rachel Green, played by Jennifer Aniston, a sheltered but friendly woman, flees her wedding day and wealthy yet unfulfilling life. Be single, okay? I just, I just, I just want to be married again. <laughs> and I just want a million dollars. Rachel? Oh, God, Monica, hi. Thank God. I just went to your building and you weren't there, and then this guy with a big hammer said that you might be here, and you are, you are. Can I get you some coffee? Decaf. <laughs> okay, everybody, this is Rachel and Heather Lincoln High Survivor. This, this is everybody. This is Chandler and, and Phoebe and Joey. And you remember my brother, Ross? Sure. Hey. Hi. Oh, God. <laughs> Rachel becomes a waitress at West Village Coffee House Central Perk after she moves into Monica's apartment, 
set at 90 Bedford Street above Central Perk and joins Monica's group of single friends in their mid-20s. Previous roommate Phoebe Buffet, Lisa Kudrow, an odd masseuse and musician, neighbor Joey Tribbiani, Matt LeBlanc, a dim-witted yet loyal struggling actor and womanizer, Joey's roommate Chandler Bing, played by Matthew Perry, a sarcastic, self-deprecating data processor, and Monica's older brother and Chandler's college roommate, Ross Geller, David Schwimmer, a sweet-natured but insecure paleontologist. Filming for the series began during the summer of 1994 in front of a live audience, who were given a summary of the series to familiarize themselves with the six main characters. A hired comedian entertained the studio audience between takes. Each 22-minute episode took six hours to film, twice the length of most sitcom tapings, mainly due to the several retakes and rewrites of the script. Although the producers always wanted to find the right stories to take advantage of being on location, Friends was never shot in New York. Bright felt that filming outside the studio made episodes less funny, even when shooting on the lot outside, and that the live audience was an integral part of the series. When the series was criticized for incorrectly depicting New York, with the financially struggling group of friends being able to afford huge apartments, Bright noted that the set had to be big enough for the cameras, lighting, and for the audience to be able to see what's going on. The apartments also needed to provide a place for the actors to execute the actions in the scripts. Before their roles on Friends, the main six cast members were somewhat familiar to television viewers but were not considered to be stars. During the series' 10-season run, the actors all achieved household name celebrity status and all pursued careers in the movies with varied success. The six actors proved to be a tight group, both on and off screen. They banded together to renegotiate their contracts after Friends became a huge hit, a must-watch show for many Americans on Thursday nights. Each eventually earned $1 million per episode. I, I was lucky I had the, the Richie Cunningham Fonzie contract where no one could make more than me. Oh, I had you, the oh, favorite nations thing, yeah. So I didn't need to fight the battle because I had that. But it was so important that we got paid the same amount of money. We were all working. We're, this, it was, you know, the show used to be called Six of One. That's where it started. Right. We were Six of One. I mean, we were a team. Yeah, so there's all this. I mean, there, it, it could have been an ugly situation which just, we all stood by each other, and that's, it, it, it was everything. I think any other way it would have been too many hard feelings, too uncomfortable, it would just been horrible. Friends notched 62 Emmy Award nominations in its run, including Perry's 2002 nod for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. Perry had a short-lived and very public romance with Julia Roberts in 1995. She was the biggest movie star in the world, and I was on the number one show on TV, he said. Friends co-creator Marta Kaufman initially asked Perry to reach out in an attempt to convince Roberts to appear on the show's post-Super Bowl episode. The two then began corresponding over facts. Three or four times a day, I would sit by my fax machine and watch the piece of paper slowly revealing her next missive, Perry writes. It was like she was placed on this planet to make the world smile, and now, in particular, me. Roberts agreed to be on the episode. Despite their on-and-off-air chemistry, the romance came to an end after Perry called it quits. I was not enough. I could never be enough. I was broken, bent, unlovable, Perry writes. So instead of facing the inevitable agony of losing her, I broke up with the beautiful and brilliant Julia Roberts. He watched Roberts win an Oscar for her role in Aaron Brockovich from his room at rehab. I was incredibly happy for her, he writes. As for me, 
I was just grateful to have made it one more day. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> they say the During the later the seasons of Friends, Chandler developed a romantic relationship with Monica. The characters eventually married, adopted twins, and planned to move to the suburbs as the series came to an end in May 2004 after a decade on the air. As much as Matthew Perry wanted to be a successful actor, he also craved the fame that came along with it. There was steam coming out of my ears. I wanted to be famous so badly, the actor admitted to the New York Times in 2002. You want the attention, you want the bucks, and you want the best seat in the restaurant. Despite being the source of so much laughter for tens of millions of viewers, Perry's private life was no laughing matter. Behind the scenes, he was harboring a dark secret. From an outsider's perspective, it would seem like I had it all, he said. It was actually a very lonely time for me because I was suffering from alcoholism. The instant success of the show felt like all Perry had ever wanted. When it happens, it's kind of like Disneyland for a while, Perry told the New York Times. For me, it lasted about eight months, this feeling of, I've made it, I'm thrilled, there's no problem in the world. And then you realize that it doesn't accomplish anything. It's certainly not filling any holes in your life. However, alcohol dependence did become a part of his life. Then, after a jet ski accident in 1997, when he was prescribed Vicodin, drugs also entered the picture. It wasn't my intention to have a problem with it, he said in 2002, but from the start, I liked how it made me feel and I wanted to get more. By day, he was cracking jokes as his alter ego Chandler, but outside of work, things started spiraling. That eventually started showing up physically when he lost about 20 pounds. I was out of control and very unhealthy, the actor told People. He first went to rehab in 1997, spending 28 days at a Hazelden Betty Ford facility in Minnesota. But he didn't stay sober for long. In May 2000, he was admitted to Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles for pancreatitis an inflammation of the pancreas from alcohol abuse. The condition can be potentially deadly. Perry was in so deep that even that scare didn't serve as a wake-up call. Unfortunately, that still wasn't enough to get me to quit drinking, he explained. As a sign of what a low point he reached, he crashed his Porsche into a house the day he was released from the hospital. Fortunately, the home was unoccupied. Though alcohol or drugs weren't in his system that day, it was further proof of how out of control his life was. All the while, Friend's ratings were going up and his paycheck was getting bigger as movie projects like 1997's Fools Rush In and 2000's The Whole Nine Yards came along. But nothing seemed to be enough. I tried to talk to him, Friends co-star LeBlanc, who played Joey Tribbiani, told People. There wasn't a response. It's such a personal struggle, they need to bottom out on their own. As difficult as it was, his co-star simply stood aside, ready to support him. After all, it was all they could do. Hard doesn't even begin to describe it. Kudrow, who played Phoebe Buffay, told the New York Times of the 2000-2001 season, When Matthew was sick, it was not fun. We were just hopelessly standing on the sidelines. We were hurting a lot. Matthew is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. He's charming and hilarious. Most of our hard laughs came from Matthew. Aniston, who played Rachel Green, described him as one of the most sensitive people I've ever met. 
more than most girls I know. His feelings get hurt. He cares what people think. 6,000 AA meetings, therapy 30 years, 15 rehabs, yeah. maybe at least. Me into um, the emergency trauma room, and it was in there that my colon exploded. Well, I was put on an ECMO machine. An ECMO machine, when you talk to any doctor, is a Hail Mary. It is the last thing that you do before people die. And there were five people that night that were put on ECMO machine, and I was the only one who survived. Friends co-creator and executive producer Marta Kaufman told people, it was terrifying watching someone you care about in so much pain. Although Perry knew they all cared, the efforts were lost on him. I wasn't ready to hear it, he admitted. You can't tell anyone to get sober. It has to come from you. Perry eventually got sober because he was worried he was going to die the next day. He did have control of one thing. I had this odd rule that I would never drink on a set, Perry told the New York Times but the effects of his addiction still showed. I went to work in extreme cases of hangovers. It's so horrible to feel that way and have to work and be funny on top of that. I don't remember three years of it, Perry admitted about filming Friends during his uncontrolled addiction. I was a little out of it at the time, somewhere between seasons three and six. Somehow, he managed to channel even more energy into work when he did double duty in February 2001, filming both Friends and the movie Serving Sarah. He commuted between sets in Los Angeles and Dallas to play his parts. Around this time, he was drinking vodka by the quart. I was sleepy and shaking at work, he said. But on February 23, 2001, something shifted. I can't describe it, because bigger things were taking place that I can't put into words, he said. In his book, Perry says season nine of the show was the only season of Friends he filmed while fully sober. He mentions that he received his only Emmy nomination for that season. Perry says he thought he was keeping his addiction a secret from his castmates until Aniston came to his dressing room one day and told him everyone could smell alcohol on him. I would fake back injuries. I would fake migraine headaches. I had eight doctors going at the same time, Perry said. I would wake up and have to get 55 Vicodin that day and figure out how to do it. When you're a drug addict, it's all math. I go to this place and I need to take three. And then I go to this place and I'm going to take five because I'm going to be there longer. It's exhausting, but you have to do it or you get very, very sick. I wasn't doing it to feel high or to feel good. I certainly wasn't a partier. I just wanted to sit on my couch, take five Vicodin, and watch a movie. That was heaven for me. That day, he was in his Dallas hotel room and decided to call his parents for help. I didn't get sober because I felt like it, he told the New York Times. I got sober because I was worried I was going to die the next day. Even though Friends was still in production and there were 13 days of shooting left on the movie, Perry took control. He flew back to California and his parents took him to another rehab center. It was scary. I didn't want to die, he said. But I'm grateful for how bad it got. It only made me more adamant about trying to get better. After two and a half months, he re-emerged and refocused. The movie production had been halted, but he was now able to go back and finish it. He also returned to his second home on the set of Friends. I learned that a happy life is possible without alcohol or drugs he said of his new outlook. 
I remember going up to him the first episode of the last season and saying, I'm so happy you're back, Kaufman said of his return. I hadn't realized how much he hadn't been there. Perry said that when friends came to an end, he felt nothing. I couldn't tell if that was because of the opioid buprenorphine I was taking or if I was just generally dead inside, Perry writes. He recalls waking up the morning after the finale was filmed, thinking about what he was going to do next. With no ridiculously high-paying, dream-come-true kind of job to go to, and no special someone in my life, things slipped fast, Perry writes. In fact, it was like falling off a cliff. Things looked promising for him for a while, until he agreed to film a sequel for the box office smash The Whole Nine Yards, titled The Whole Ten Yards. Jimmy, don't shoot! It's me! It's us! I know! Okay, that almost hit me! Laugh of Gogolak was at my house! Oh my god! This hit me. I know. He's still alive! Oh. <laughs> Cynthia's been kidnapped. I need your help. This could be great! I'll wait for you to get back in the game. Yes, back in the game. I have no intention of getting back in the game. I like cooking, I like cleaning, and I like to decorate. So, this is how a retired mass murderer acts? No, this is the way a retired mass murderer acts. Ah! Noted. Unlike the 2000 classic, the sequel bombed at the box office. That was the moment Hollywood decided to no longer invite Mr. Perry to be in the movies, Perry wrote in his book. This led to Perry seeking more dramatic roles, and was eventually offered the lead in Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. While the show initially did well, it was ultimately canceled after one season. For his performance as Joe Quincy in The West Wing, Perry received two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series in 2003 and 2004. He appeared as attorney Todd Merrick in two episodes of Ally McBeal. In 2004, he made his directorial debut and acted in an episode of the fourth season of the comedy drama Scrubs, an episode which included his father. Perry went on to star in the 2006 TV movie The Ron Clark Story, about a Southern teacher who moves to New York City to work with disadvantaged students. The performance earned him Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. In 2007, he played a screenwriter who tries to cure his depression to win over the woman he loves in the independent film, Numb. Perry then played the lead in another independent feature, Birds of America which was shown at the 2008 Sundance Film Festival. The following year, he had a role in the comedy 17 again with Zac Efron and Leslie Mann. Perry began working on writing his own projects. Mr. Sunshine premiered in 2011, but was canceled after one season. This was followed by Go On, which was also quickly canceled. I wasn't devastated by the lack of success. As I said, I knew a hit TV show couldn't fill my soul, he writes. Perry finally found another winner with the 2015 revival of The Odd Couple, playing the messy Oscar Madison to Thomas Lennon's fastidious Felix Unger. Despite mixed reviews, audiences took to the comedic repartee of the two stars through its three-season run. Sometimes, when you're around Gabby, you get a little defensive. No, I don't. You do. Shut up. <laughs> do you want to get this over with? Be nice. You don't have to agree with her, but at least let her finish her sentences. Sometimes, we say more with our mouths closed. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, and I don't like your tone.
During these years, Perry also enjoyed a recurring role on the legal drama The Good Wife and reappeared for its spin-off, The Good Fight. One of Perry's final roles was as Ted Kennedy on the 2017 limited series The Kennedys After Camelot, also starring Katie Holmes as Jackie Kennedy. While health problems still affected him, in 2018 he was hospitalized for five months and nearly died from an exploded colon, and he still got targeted for disheveled appearances, overall Perry had come a long way since the darkest days during Friends. You don't recover from what I went through overnight, he told people. It's a day-to-day -day process. Perry says that his therapist helped him quit drugs by telling him to associate them with the possibility of having to wear a colostomy bag for the rest of his life. I have not been interested in taking a drug since, he wrote, later adding, I've surrendered, but to the winning side, not the losing. I'm no longer mired in an impossible battle with drugs and alcohol. I no longer feel the need to automatically light up a cigarette to go with my morning coffee. Perry ends the autobiography thanking his friends and family and naming the one thing he got right. I never gave up. I never raised my hands and said, that's enough. I can't take it anymore. You win, Perry writes. And because of that, I stand tall now, ready for what comes next. In November 2019, Warner Brothers Television was developing a Friends reunion special for their new streaming service, HBO Max. The special would feature the whole cast and co-stars. In February 2020, an unscripted Friends was commissioned with all original cast and co-creators returning. The special was filmed in Los Angeles, California at Stage 24, also known as the Friends Stage at Warner Brothers Studios Burbank, where Friends had been filmed since its second season. The filming of the reunion began in April 2021. Filming of the special was delayed twice, first in March 2020 and second in August 2020, both due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The trivia game and talk show segments of the special, hosted by James Corden, were filmed in front of a live audience of mostly union extras who were COVID screened and hired for the gig. Representatives for Perry clarified that he had an emergency dental surgery prior to filming when viewers were concerned about his appearance. Fans were so happy to see all six cast members back together again, celebrating the one thing that made them all the famous celebrities they are today. 18 pages. Front and back! Front and back is correct! Hey! Oh my god, that's good! This is, the, <laughs> this is the letter. And who gets the points for that? What? Me! Okay, guys, you're up. Right. Literature. Literature. Oh, that's a good choice, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Literature. According to Monica, how many erogenous zones are there on the female body? Seven. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney, is that correct? That's correct. Seven. <laughs> on October 28, 2023, Perry was found unresponsive in his hot tub at his home in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles and was later pronounced dead. He was only 54. LAPD Captain Scott Williams said, the cause of death may not be known for some time, but at this point, foul play is not suspected.
On October 29, 2023, the cause of death was listed as deferred by the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner's Office pending additional investigative steps. Officials received a medical call from Perry's home overlooking the Pacific Ocean at around 4 p.m. Saturday, reporting that the actor was in a hot tub and not breathing. The identity of the caller had not been revealed. An adult male patient was deceased prior to first response arrival, the LAFD said in a statement. The patient was found by a bystander who had repositioned the victim, where the head was out of water in a freestanding hot tub. Firefighters pulled the victim out of the jacuzzi and did a quick medical assessment to find he was deceased, the statement read. Prior to his passing, Perry uploaded a series of posts to his social media, all relating to Batman. Eerily, the actor's final Instagram post before he passed away shows a photograph of him in a hot tub with the backdrop of the night sky and half moon. On October 30th, 2023, Perry's Friends co-stars issued a joint statement. We are all so utterly devastated by the loss of Matthew. We were more than just castmates. We are a family. There is so much to say, but right now we're going to take a moment to grieve and process this unfathomable loss. In time, we will say more, as and when we are able. For now, our thoughts and our love are with Maddie's family, his friends, and everyone who loved him around the world. I mean, I was shocked because, you know, when you see an ambulance come outside, you know, obviously wondering, everyone would wonder, um, what, you know, what's it exactly for? And then I kind of looked outside because I was about to head to a friend's house and they were outside my neighbor's door. Um, so, I, I mean, I didn't think much of it at the time until, you know, police started arriving and everything. He just always got the laughs, you know. He wasn't glamorous, he was, you know, just your average Joe, and so I think he was relatable for a lot of people. I spend a lot of time watching the show and growing up with the show, and he's an integral part of the, the flow of the show. Well, yeah, he had more of the insecurities than the others, and I think there was an honesty in it to that, in terms of being lucky in love and using sarcasm to deal with trauma and pain and kind of difficult childhood. I mean, I think that he is an incredible actor. He made millions of people laugh also like all over the world. And I think one of the things that is a lesser known impact that he had was that he taught a lot of people English. I always hear stories about people watching friends in other countries because it was syndicated all over the world and that's how they learned English. And I feel like that's like a underappreciated part of his legacy. Despite his pain and struggle, Perry said his recovery journey left him with a prevailing sense of duty to help others walking similar paths. I am no saint, none of us are. But once you have been at death's door and you don't die, 
you would think you would be bathed in relief and gratitude. But that isn't it at all. Instead, you look at the difficult road ahead of you to get better, and you are pissed. Something else happens, too. You are plagued by this nagging question. Why have I been spared? He wrote in the book. I've said this for a long time. When I die, I don't want friends to be the first thing that's mentioned, he said. I want helping people to be the first thing that's mentioned, and I'm going to live the rest of my life proving that. We will always remember Matthew Perry for the hours of entertainment he brought us and the work he did behind the scenes to help others who suffered from the same illness he did.